it's system review time and today we are looking at the retro handheld console from Blaze. Here it is in a box. And the box has two sides. Well, no, it's got several sides, but you know, top and bottom and stuff. I'm not reviewing the box, really. It's a box. Who cares? Some people like to review boxes. I would rather review the product that's inside it. Little leaflets and bits and pieces. Really, whatever. Don't care. Um, this is... Well, it's, it's a handheld made by Blaze that plays Atari 2600 games. 50 games. We'll look at them shortly, but first we're going to have a look at the thing itself. Um, it's going for the original Woody 2600 aesthetic, but I'm pretty damn sure that the 2600 wood grain actually didn't look like that. It, it, was, it had a coarser grain to it, but so what? It doesn't matter. It's the thought that counts. Also, the ridges, there were never ridges on the wood grain parts. They were always on the black, like that. But again, eh, doesn't matter really. I, I like the styling of this. Um, like this, you get that on the original Atari joysticks. The red button, that's not a button, that's a D-pad. But it's still styled like the button. It's iconic. If you had... A 2600, you will recognise all of the styling cues on this. These start and select buttons, the colour, you can't really see, they're, they're, they're silver-ish. Um, like the switches that ran along the six switches, or four on the later one, of the, the Woody, um, and indeed the Vader. They're reminiscent of those, excuse me while I just drop it on the table. Yeah, it's very, very... When you look at this, you can't help but think Woody 2600. And that's exactly what they're going for. And it's clever. I like it. It works. To, to my mind, they have got the styling right for a thing like this. It's cool. Um, what have we got on the top? Let's... let's yeah, on-off switch... Headphones, AV out, volume. They've given you an AV out. They haven't given you a, a, a lead, but... Well, if you're someone like me, you probably have lots of leads already from other things that do pretty much the same thing, but usually Famiclones. Batteries. It takes four AA. Don't know how long they last. I haven't played it long enough to find out when it runs out. So, what's it like... To use basically what's on it. Let's have a looky. I need to um, put this thing in a in a position where we can look at the games without tons of reflection. So bear with me. Okay, so what have we got? 3D tic tac toe adventure, air sea battle, asteroids, blackjack, bowling, breakout canyon, bomber, casino, centipede. Circus Atari, Crystal Castles, Demons to Diamonds, Desert Falcon, Dodgem, Double Dunk, Fun with Numbers, Really? Golf, Gravita, Haunted House, Home Run, Human Cannonball, Maze Craze, Millipede, Miniature Golf, Missile Command, Night Driver, Off the Wall, Pong Video Olympics, Quad Run, Radar Lock, Real Sports Football, Real Sports Tennis, Real Sports Volleyball, Sprint Master, Super Football, Steeplechase, Stellar Track, Street Racer, Submarine Commander, Super Baseball, Super Breakout, Sword Quest Earth World, Sword Quest Fire World, Sword Quest Water World, Tempest, Video Checkers, Video Chess, Video Pinball, Yars Revenge. So, 50 games, 50 Atari games, and there's the thing, they are Atari games. What that means is, you're not going to get anything from Activision, you're not going to get anything from Parker Brothers, you're not going to get anything from Spectra Video or Imagic or any of the other third-party developers. But more than that, you're not going to get anything that was licensed by Atari from arcade developers. There's nothing by Namco. 
there's nothing by Taito, Taito, whatever. There's nothing by Williams. You're not going to get Space Invaders, Galaxian, Defender, Pac-Man. And that is a problem to my mind. There are some good games on here. Atari did make some good arcade games and there are the, the 2600 versions of those games on here. At, at, I'm going to say Asteroids, but is it really a good version of Asteroids? Let's have a look here. Oh, look at that strip light on the ceiling. You see, I was playing this yesterday and it struck me. Look at the direction of the asteroids. They're all going vertically. Just, there's a little bit of drift to the left or right, but largely they're either going up or down depending on which side of the screen they're on. And I find that weird. Um, yeah, but... You know. It plays a fair enough version of Asteroids. It plays what you would get on the 2600. So, you know, you can't expect it to be... Um, any better than you would get on the 2600. The screen is... It's okay. It's not, as you, you know, see that? Viewing angles are not exceptional, but they are good enough. Resolution is not exceptional, but it's good enough. Um, I'm not going to show tons of games, because you either know what 2600 games are like, or you're so young that you're not going to care about this anyway. They're 2600 games. But there are a couple that I take issue with. Um, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, Night Driver. Okay. Night Driver is a game that you play with a paddle controller. And we good, with good reason. Because look what happens if you try and play it with a D-pad. Or like as if it was a joystick. You just... Actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing marginally better now than I did, I did yesterday. I, oh, God. It's not especially controllable, though somehow I am doing better... Mm, maybe not. No. No. It's not very playable. It doesn't respond quickly enough. That, I, I have... I take issue with that. Um... But worse, Pong Video Olympics. Now, this... Okay, if you want to play one player against the computer, you can do that. Um, when you can work out which way... Yeah, I'm the one on the right. And... You... Get, your controls are actually freaky. It is left and right to go up and down. Um, that's stupid. But okay. Now, you can put it into a two-player mode. Let me just find one of those. There. That, I think, is going to be two-player mode. But get this. They could feasibly have made this two-player so that two people could play it. Um, you've got the two buttons over on the right these two here, but they don't do anything except launch the ball. Um, to control that one over on the right, you go left and right on the D-pad. To control this one on the left, you go up and down on the D-pad. So two people cannot play this. That is stupid. They should have used the start button to launch the ball, and these two buttons could control that bat to go up and down. So you've got a two-player game that you can't play two-player. You know, it's like, are you going to be player one and player two together, controlling them? Why? You know. Um, stupid. Yeah. So things like that. Um, let it down. I played a few games, and it's pretty much... It's like I said, it's what you would expect. They're 2600 games. You either like 2600 games, or you don't. I do. I actually like 2600 games more than I like NES games. Um, 
but I'm an old git who had a 2600 back in the day and feels a lot of nostalgia for it. When I was a kid, you didn't say, have you got a video games console? You said, have you got an Atari? Because that was it. That was, you weren't going to have anything else. Certainly where I lived, no one was going to have a ColecoVision. No one was going to have a Vectrex. No one cared about the, um, the Philips video pack. Um, yeah, it was just, have you got an Atari? So this does appeal to me but actually not for the games and that's the thing the the game selection is very it's limited it is missing some serious good quality games because they've done it on the cheap they've gone purely for atari no licensed games from arcade manufacturers or whatever no third party games from other developers purely atari developed games um and that's kind of restricted or restrictive, you know, limiting the, the the games you can get on it. The thing is, you can get things like this. There's an app games thing that's got 70 games on it for a similar kind of price. This cost 29.99 from uh, Argos. Excuse me a moment. Yeah, it was 29.99 from Argos, which. I, uh, that's just about barely almost tolerably acceptable for a thing like this, I think. Um, I, the question is, who is this aimed at? Who is it supposed to appeal to? I'm not sure, uh, really. It does appeal to me, but you know what? Not for the games. I don't like this because I want to play the games that are on it because I can play them on my 2600. You can play them just as well, if not better, on other things like that LDK game handheld for not a lot more money. You can have a hacked PSP or any number of other systems. You can play them on your phone. You can play them for free with emulation, you know, on whatever you like. The only reason I like this is for the styling. I think it looks great. Um, it's it's a strange thing. It's a strange device. It makes no sense whatsoever in terms of being value for money, um, a viable gaming device that serves any purpose whatsoever, has any kind of impressive functionality. No, there are so many things that do it better. Um, but none of them look like this. <laughs> and that's the only reason to own one of these. And the only people who are going to give a crap about that are people around about my age who, for them, gaming was Atari. That was it. There, there, nothing else mattered um, for quite a while. Anyone else is just going to look at this and laugh and say, what the hell, why? Why would you? Um, but I like it. So I suppose the question is, given that the price has dropped, I don't remember exactly what they did cost. Should you buy one of these for 30 quid? Um, no, <laughs> not really. Not, not, not unless you really, really, really want something with Atari 2600 styling. There is no other reason to buy it. It makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, aspects of it are really badly thought out uh, it's been done to a price you know that it's limited in so many ways but I like it <laughs> figure that one out yeah um I want to say a great big thank you to my supporters on patreon because without them I wouldn't have been able to buy this um, to review it and tell you not to buy one unless you're a bit crazy and I think I'm probably a bit crazy yeah okay thank you for watching um it says here Bedway offers his thanks to those who subscribe to his Patreon account thing uh is that what he needs <laughs>